San Jacinto, California, over at Abundant Life Network. And I, I just wanted to, uh, I haven't been out here in a while, uh, you know, say hello or be on any live. I actually tried to do a live video today from my camera, from my from my computer, my laptop, and it won't, it won't recognize my camera. And so I got this new tablet I'm working on right now. And it, it doesn't even, like, when I go out on Facebook on that, it doesn't even have, like, a, uh, you know, a live button that I can even do a live on my tablet. So, anyway, I'm recording it, and I'm going to put it out there as soon as I get it done. I have uh, some, some value I want to share with you today. I've been kind of studying this uh, one philosopher named Ernest Holmes. And he's from back in, like, the 1930s. And uh, he's, you know, has really cool philosophy on life and very believe that it's very biblical and uh, righteous. Now there might be some people out there that don't believe everything that he teaches, which you know nobody's you know all exact and, and not everything resonates with everyone. So I'm just going to show you some stuff that I've uh, you know I've been learning from him. Uh, talk about that a little bit and um, show you in correlation with what's in his book, Science of Mind on the teachings of the New Testament. It's very, very interesting, so stick around, okay? Stick around. So anyway, I wanted to uh, start off and tell you that, you know, the reason why I haven't been out here is I uh, had a death in the family. My nephew, he was actually just 41 years old, and uh, it really took a toll on me, you know, um, spiritually and, and psychologically, actually, you know, just having the grieving going on and, you know, um, my nephew Jeremy was an awesome person, and he had so many people at the memorial uh, that we had honored his, you know, celebration of life for him at the Irvine Park a couple of weeks ago. I was just amazed at the, um, you know, the, the response of people that um, shared about his life. It just was amazing, and um, but it kind of got me into a little depression, and so I'm kind of out of it now. I, it was hard for me to get back into the regular work, you know, schedule of things and stuff like that. And so um, I'm back in the swing of things. I've got some new, new stuff going on. But this one, I want to read to you from uh, Ernest Holmes. I don't know if you can see it. It looks kind of backwards on my screen, so I don't know. Uh, Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. And this was a 50th, 50th anniversary edition, which was published in, like, 1938. Okay? I think it was 1938. If I'm reading it right, I mean his his ministry was from like 1887 to 1960. So this is like really old stuff that you know they have some really cool things on on YouTube that you can listen to of his radio cast that he used to do when he was here with us on this earth. And um, I'm really you know glad the Most High. Um, that I give respect to right now, the Most High God, Creator of the Universe, for guiding me down here to, to find Him, you know, because a lot of His philosophy is so interesting. It's really good. It can really get your mindset in the right place. So this is from um, page 431, and it's in, I think, part five, the teachings of the New Testament, from the teachings of Jesus. And um, there's a lot of little, you know, just paragraphs, small paragraphs, where he takes portions of the scriptures and teaches like a philosophy with it. And this one is The Secret of Prayer from Matthew 6.6. 6. Okay, the secret of prayer and its power in the outward life depends upon an unconditional faith within and reliance upon this inner presence. We must enter the closet. That is, we are to shut out all else and enter the presence of spirit. Presence is capitalized and spirit is capitalized. In quietness and confidence. Believing. Prayer has power, not through repetition, but by belief and acceptance. Prayer is to be simple, direct, and receiving. We are to believe that God indwells our own life, that this divine presence is sufficient for all needs. We are to believe that God will provide for and bless us abundantly. And when we enter this secret place, we are to leave all else behind. All hate, animosity, and vindictiveness. 
for only in doing so can we enter. And that is entering into the kingdom of, of God, where the presence of God is, right? Because the kingdom is within us. <laughs> That's what Yeshua taught us, right? And so in order, we have to realize, you know, bring that into the realization in your mind that God lives within you. He's in every every bit of every cell that you that you are enveloped in, right? Your spirit is enveloped in this this earthly shell and it has his presence and his spirit within it. So I hope I've, you know, brought some value to you as far as uh, the teachings of Yeshua and in having the faith that we need to have and um, just believing that God is there. Whenever you go into prayer, he's right there. You know, as soon as you recognize him and acknowledge him in all your ways, he will direct your path. Just trust in him. Release it and let it go and let God, you know, take care of what's going on. There's no need to worry about anything. There's no struggle. Not in the kingdom of God. God isn't struggling. So why would you? Right? It's a really hard thing to get your mindset into that place. Right? But the minute that you just really let go and say, okay, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. You know why? Because you have a divine partnership with the Creator. And it's your divine birthright to have those things that you desire. Those things are good that help you and others. You know, um, we really don't have to sit there and beg Him for it. You know, you just believe that it's gonna, that He's going to provide that for you. And you thank Him for it before He ever even gives it to you. Before it ever comes your way. Because you know He's going to take care of you no matter what. He takes care of the trees that never get water. He takes care of the little birds that don't have anybody to feed them. And he feeds all the animals that are wild, and he waters all the plants that are wild. So why wouldn't he take care of you, his child, right? I love you all, and I hope you have a blessed day. And if you need anything, just let me know and comment down on the video and share this video with all your friends if you think it's of value. So please share my video and like it and share it out there in your, in your Facebook world. Thank you so much. I love you. Bye-bye.